Would you look at that? It is Radford right there on the screen. So, um, I'm trying to figure out what to do. Because I want to be able to jump in and watch what happens. At the same time, obviously we got some glitchy bullshit going on. So I'm not sure of what I want to do. Because obviously we want to see this, but do we want to watch the full thing type of deal, you know? It's us and Radford. They are a superior team. I just don't want to sit here and have to restart the game again. Did it mention what the presentation was going to be? ESPN again? I genuinely wonder if it's an issue with the ESPN setup. I just want this to work so that we can watch. That's all. Let's sim it. We'll try it once. We'll try it once. Our first ever NCAA tournament game against Radford. Winner moves on to play a number one seed. We might not. Oh, fuck. What do I do? What do I do? We clearly have it won. We clearly have this one. It's not worth jumping in and having it potentially freeze. It's not. It's just not. It's got to be a no-touching win. We are officially, officially in. Beating Radford by 30. We move on to play the Maryland Terps. Oh, God. God, we're gonna get fucking smoked, but there it is. UM versus UM, baby. Oh, we're gonna get smoked, but you know what? We gotta win. We made it to the first round. It's the first time Maine's ever made it. Ah, dicks. Ah, dicks. We're gonna get smoked here. Just absolutely smoked. Now we watch the whole game, right? I could drop it down to five minutes. For this at least, I could drop it down to like five minutes and we can just watch the damn thing. If it'll even let us watch the damn thing. Sixth toughest place to play. Fuck me. Well, let's see if it'll let us watch it. It doesn't like the whole jumping in mid-deal. Will it let us watch the game? We're going to get absolutely pooped on. Here we are. Welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA tournament. Today's game is between the Maine Black Bears and the Maryland. We made it. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, but we made it. Wally McTally and Bo Cruz. Good luck, have fun, pretty much. They still got one dude left from season one. Control the crowd, attack immediately, capitalize on free throws. Yeah, no kidding. Well... The Bears are going dancing for the first time. We've officially begun the first half of play. Five minute halves. We might as well watch it. It's our first ever actual game. We won't even consider the plan as an actual. Shots up. The hop step. Oh, God. <laughs> right, right in the face of our best two players. Back to the basket. You can step out a few feet and knock it down, guys. He's just Inside. Nice missed shot to kick things off. Thanks for joining CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball. I'm Gus Johnson alongside Bill Raftery. Right in his face again! Oh, have a B rating last season suck. Have a C rating this season and make the tourney, right? 
It might honestly be an ESPN coverage glitch, I don't know. But this one, he hit the backboard. Like honestly, like it's just we didn't try to sim and jump in. We just jumped in from the start and it worked, which worked last time too with the uh, ESPN score bug too. All right, take your sweet time. Take your sweet time. What the fuck was that? Damn right, Coach Tukey's pissed off. What was that random-ass force? How long until we score a point? Not even two. Good block. Good keep. All right. All right. That was pretty. Inside? Yeah! There we go. We got one. One for three from the floor, but damn it, we got one. We have scored a point. History has been made. He missed it. Good defense. Good defense. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Here we go. Quick tempo. Maybe not. Horrible turnover. Passed right through our own guy's legs. Oh, God. Slow him up. We can't afford to have shit turnovers like that. I really don't like our guards. Down low. And it goes. Turns out they got a little bit more vision than we do. Come on, meow. He tries the three. From downtown. And nope. Look to Allen. Way out on the right way. Old Coach Tug is very unhappy right now. Fires. Shots off. The offensive rebound. Put back goes. Eight to two in favor. Of Maryland. Left on the game clock. Raph, these two teams in the first half of this tournament game have shown that they definitely belong. Hey, good mid-range shot there. All right. Teams are competing well right now. The goal at this point in the game is to remain close. You don't want to fall too far behind. These teams are demonstrating that this one may go down to the wire. Weak ass call, Raph. Weak ass call. Especially against Gunther Steiner. That was just good defense. Disrespectful. A couple of free will. Chance to breathe. He gets it to go. Gets two at the charity strike. Ten four. Long lead pass. Good movement. Jump shot. Mid-range. Hey! Okay. 10-6. 10-6. You're hanging in there. It's not a complete blowout yet. Might not be enough time on the clock for it to turn into a blowout. Great block. You need to take it easy, buddy. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Gunther. 10-2. Okay. Terry receives the pass. Come on, good defense. Get a hand in. Let's go. Ooh, get back to penetrating. Damn right. Wait, never mind. He's their coach. It'd be funny if my coach said it. Come on. Come on. Come on. From three. The Black Bears have the lead. Oh, my God. We're winning. There's still a lot of time left, but we're winning. Stop the count. Fucking take a screenshot. Remember it forever. Holy shit. It might be only the first half, but we are winning. Holy shit. Fuck that turtle. I'm gonna turn you into a soup. We are currently winning.
We gotta sit through the entirety of the timeout. Wow. It won't last. It won't last, but we are currently winning. Not sure how much longer we gotta wait for this timeout. Hopefully the answer's not long at all. There we go. All right, boys. 43 seconds left in the first half. The lowest scoring game of all time. The Terrapins now running I don't know how that wasn't turned over. Very similar to their man -to -man. They Our defense looks a bit confused. Oh, you can't let the little guy get in there and do that. That's rough defense. In the paint. Trying to drive. It's good. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, thing of beauty. Fucking like a prime Kevin Garnett. It was gorgeous. Ten seconds left in the half. Terp's going to get the final shot. Another offensive rebound. And the putback goes as the time expires. Maryland carries a one-point lead. Into the second half. But we're only down by one. And here is our game summer. We've seen a lot of action and some impressive play here today. A look at these numbers. Obviously, we're not going to watch the full 20 minutes. It would have been nice to have a proper score. But fortunately, just two offensive rebounds hasn't quite helped. You can do this, boys. You can do this. Bill, what's Five minutes. Guys now. Here they are. Five minutes they to glory. Season long just to get to the NCAA tournament, and we've got a half behind us and a half to go. And somebody <sighs> nearly turned over. You know what I think is really impressive here? Tonight? Goes for the layup. Got it. Both of these clubs okay. I don't know how, but we'll take that. All right. Come on, nice block. Nice block, let's go. Great defense. And we turned it over immediately. Tried to pass it into the middle. Oh, unforced turnovers, the offensive rebounds, and another shot right over him. It's our own mistakes, not properly rebounding in the turnovers. Jesus, what a pass. Jesus, what a shot. Offensive rebound, put back blocked. No foul. We need to stop here badly. Can't let him go up by three, let alone four. We need to stop. Fire. Fade away. Miss. Good old. Good job. Good job. Out on the right way. Come on. Big possession here, boys. Another turnover. Just trying to force the ball into the middle. This isn't NHL 22 with forced cross creases. Come on. Oh no. Oh no, get a hand up. Oh, that's it. That's basically it. I know there's three minutes left, but we are absolutely killing ourselves with these turnovers. Mid-range, nice shot. With Steiner again. That was a clutch shot from our best player. On the left side. Let's it go. The oh, come on. Turnover, they'll go the No. Other way. Now in transition. Oh my god, these turnovers and another weak ass foul. Oh, the fucking turnovers, man. The goddamn turnovers. We're closing in on double digits and it's only a 10 minute game. I don't know. What do you think? God, this is a close one, guys. I think the last few possessions are going to dictate who moves on and who goes home. 
We kept it close, but I don't think we're overcoming a five point deficit. Come on, quick movement, quick movement. You got space. Quick movement, boys. Come on, find the open man. For three, doesn't shoot it. In the paint. And he lays it up and in. Won't question it, it's fine. Back to a three point lead. Oh, for three, that's it. Right in his fucking face. Terps up by six. Get it down on the low block. In the lane. No. And a brutal missed shot. Will pretty much seal the deal. Too many turnovers. The defense just not on point. They hit numerous shots with a man right in front of them. You got 90 seconds. We're down by six. On the wing. Jump shot. Can't get it to go. Another missed shot. Great ball movement. We made the tourney for the first time. But oh, gets the ball. It's just not gonna happen. Under one minute remaining on the game clock. Fire, you bet. Another shot with a man right in front of him. Put it up. No foul, another missed shot. A little clock management now, Gus. They have to foul in order to stop the clock. Absolutely collapsed in the second half. We absolutely collapsed in the second half. They'll throw it in from the side. And yet another stoppage, and yet another foul. And why not? Boys, why even bother him with the fouls? Why even bothering? It's over. Just let it go. Just let it go. And the foul will stop the clock. Just gotta wait until they're in the bonus, basically. Offensively, they'll set up from the sideline. Foul, and that stops the clock again. Gus, as a coach, your seniors are really, really important. The other class will look to them for guidance and direction. And when a senior is accepting of this role, it really helps out the coaching staff. I knew, obviously, it was a nearly impossible task, but we kept it so close in that first half that you started to think maybe, just maybe. And it wasn't meant to be. Damn. An 11 and 2 run in the last nine minutes. He launches the bomb and he nails the trap. Good shot. Too little, too late, but a good shot. Too little, too late, but a good shot. Coach, it's tough when almost everyone on the floor can knock down free throw. As a coach, you gotta love it. When your team can knock it down at such a high rate. Here we have a look at one of the sophomores for this team. Poe doesn't miss from the line. Through his freshman year, and he's learned a lot. This is going to be another big season for him. Let's see how he does today. The Terrapins are looking to force the tempo now by extending their defense. Now, because forcing the opposition to play 94 feet is ideal. But they can't play the full court game. The shot won't fall. That's it. The number one seed moves on. And the dream is, uh, the dream's over. The dream's over. It was so incredibly unlikely. <laughs> the big kick. It was so incredibly unlikely, but 
they really have nobody but themselves to blame. That was that was a brutal game in terms of possession. That's it for us here today. Until next time, for Coach Raftery, I'm Gus Johnson. Thanks for watching college basketball here on CBS Sports. So Maryland moves on, Maine in our first appearance. Get bounced. I gotta see that final turnover number because it couldn't have been great. Five turnovers to their one. Out rebounded nine to five. Eight free throws to zero. Two offensive rebounds to one. Yeah. It's just the turnovers. And that scored a 17 to 9 in that second half. Four turnovers to zero in that uh, in that second half. We just choked it. We absolutely choked it. Unfortunately. It was looking so promising. But we done choked it. The big layup. Oh, I was waiting for it to load something. It's just like, ah, oh, it is what it is. Well, we are out of the tournament. We are still going to see who ends up winning the damn thing, though. Because, again, we happen to fall. Let's see what we can do, though, in terms of simulating. And getting to where we got to be. So, uh, we knew that Arizona fell again in the first round. As they fall to Western Kentucky by one point. That was the only upset. That was the only upset. Butler losing to Oklahoma. That was the only upset there in the South region. Was Western Kentucky there over Arizona. In the West... We're actually not entirely done. There we go. Uh, no upsets on the western side of things. In the Midwest. Only one upset. Gonzaga over Mizzou. Gonzaga moving on. And in the East. Starting a little bit to sim. In the East, Davidson does it again. They beat Washington. It's kind of ridiculous. Davidson just doesn't lose. And that was the only upset there. Second round. In the East, Davidson does it again. They knock off number one Oklahoma State. Fucking Davidson, man. Every time. Wow, there were actually three upsets in the second round. Cincy over Minnesota. Notre Dame beats Indiana pretty convincingly. And Wake Forest over Michigan State. So three upsets in the second round. Highest seed left is the four seed. It's crazy. In the South, not a single upset. In the West... Not a single upset in the West. And in the Midwest, you have Texas over Tennessee. You also have Syracuse over California. So a couple of upsets there. Sweet 16. Let's see what we got here. So in the South, you have Duke upsetting number one Maryland. So Maryland finally falls. Duke moving on. They will play Kentucky in the Elite Eight. In the West, Arkansas upsets North Carolina. The number one seeds are falling. Bama over Stanford. So you have Alabama and Arkansas. No, not in football. In the Midwest, West Virginia over Texas. And Louisville over Syracuse. In the East, Cincinnati stops Davidson. Notre Dame beats Wake Forest. So in the Elite Eight, we'll start in the South. Duke upsets Kentucky. 
So Duke moving on to the final four. Duke over Maryland is an upset. I mean, in terms of seeding, it is, though. And you also don't know what these schools look like at this point. In the West, Bama to the final four over Arkansas. West Virginia moving on from the Midwest. And Cincy over Notre Dame. So your final four, Bama and Duke, West Virginia and Cincy. Only one number one seed makes it and two four seeds advance to the final four. Your national title game will be Bama and Cincinnati. So Alabama beats Duke by four and the sole remaining number one seed is out as Cincinnati beats West Virginia. Cincy and Bama for the national title. And Alabama wins it. They've conquered, uh, they've conquered the turf. Now they conquer the fucking court. Bama wins everything. They beat Cincinnati. Crimson Tide. Get it done. And win in 2013. Sets the stage for another offseason for us. This was technically, despite this team looking the best it's ever looked, this was technically our best season to date. Verbal agreements, we're going to be bringing in Ty Whitehead and Leon Glenn. We'll sign both of them. That leaves one scholarship offer open. In terms of players leaving, Beefington Stromboli. As a junior, is going to transfer out. So say goodbye to Beefington. Who was getting a little bit better, but wasn't exactly elite. So. Yeah, honestly, Beefington is a slasher. No speed, no quickness. Like, you weren't good. Zero range whatsoever. <laughs> so yeah, Beefington is out. Doesn't feel like a major loss. We move ahead to the off-season recruiting. Let's see if we can get through this. 274 points left. Positional breakdown. We still have no needs, but now we have two scholarships left because of Beefington leaving. Who won the ship? Alabama. It's the highest interest levels. We have a three-star... And Justin Blake, who wants to come... Oh, my God! A couple of three stars want to come here all of a sudden. Oh, thank God. We have Ty Lee, Justin Blake, Derek Lucas, and Gary Willis. So two guards and two big men. <laughs> play, play the gif. It's happening. Oh, thank God we made that tournament. So, let's take a look here at our team and kind of what we need the most. So at center, Steiner is a senior, as is, as is Biz, excuse me. McTally is also a senior. Cruz is only a junior. Honestly, finding the, uh, the next great big men for us. Might have to be our best bet. Now, if we go to high, still those four. And what about medium? Okay, those four undoubtedly are our targets. I think we go for Lucas and Lee, and then we look for either Blake or Willis. But we only, ah, we only have two scholarships. Never mind, I thought we had three. So Lucas is a slightly undersized center. Or we could just offer all four of them the scholarship and first come, first serve. Pretty much. We do have to send out the letter of interest. All right, we have to figure out the best way to handle this. 
Honestly, I'm tempted to do the watch game. Although there isn't technically a game to watch, so maybe not. Yeah, I know, that's a shitload of points for off-season recruiting too, compared to what we're used to. All right, all four are still interested. Two guards, two big men. We're in second for Gary Willis. Like I said, right now it's just a matter of do we offer all four of the scholarship and just have it be first come, first serve. Passer score, passer score, blue collar post, complete post. Derek Lewis, or Lucas, excuse me, wants to be here. Ty Lee is a bit of a toss up. Blake has us at three. Willis has us at two. Both are interested in going to Ryder. I think we go with the two higher rated guys. We go with Lucas and we go with Willis to kick things off. Conduct a phone interview. Head coach a visit. Talk about playing time there, Gary. I will officially offer you a scholarship as our first choice. And then same for Lucas. You are also our first choice. Higher rated, maybe a little bit more promising. Let's see what happens. We got them! Two three stars right at the end. Willis and Lucas. Blake went to Princeton. But we got a three star center and a three star guard. Willis had a little bit more size on him too. Slightly higher position rank. That's huge. Just making the national, uh, just making the national title tournament was absolutely huge for us, and actually gave us a pretty significant boost. Lee, I would love to offer you a scholarship. I don't have any more. Please come here as a walk-on. Please. Don't even think that's possible. But how great would it be for Ty Lee to sign here? No doubts about his ability to put points at college level. Average at best rebounder. Always have an eye on the pros. And whatever, we might as well keep finding things out about him, right? We got the points. We're not going to need them. There's nothing else we can do. He still hasn't signed anywhere. Some of these points are just so fucking expensive, but obviously a big part of it is we just don't have a massive program yet. Well, Ty still hasn't signed anywhere. And it won't be here, but I wish it could be. So let's get a look then, after that. At what our team is going to look like. Lucas is a 69 out of the gates. Can I cut someone now? It would be too late. I wish, but it would be too late at this stage. I don't believe at that stage you can actually cut somebody. You might be able to, but... It is what it is. All right, so a point guard. Glenn was a 64. You got McGruff. Last on McTally. Shooting guard, we got Cruz. You still got downspout. Willis is actually going to jump downspout in the depth chart. A forward, Raptor Jesus heading into his senior year. Power forward, Crazy Monk behind Biz. And then we actually have quite a few centers. Because we also brought in 7-2 Ty Whitehead. So hopefully continuing the trend of having some pretty solid big men on the team. Primarily with Steiner. That does bring us up to 15 dudes. So. 
That is true. In terms of seniors, it's one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, we shouldn't shouldn't have to worry too much in that regard. I do agree with redshirting Whitehead for the season. Only because I'd be afraid to redshirt Lucas and have him walk away. Which I think could happen. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, we could try to redshirt Lucas for the year and hope that he stays. Like, that's our big choice right now. Maybe the biggest choice we've had yet. Do we redshirt Derek Lucas and hope that he just doesn't get mad and walk away? You know? But now that we do have this talent, I do think we could be a little bit more aggressive. We can change our mind, I'm quite sure, but maybe we do redshirt Lucas. And just hope he doesn't get pissed and make sure we have points. So that if he does, we're okay. We got three guards, like... Redshirting Gary Willis makes all the sense in the world, so long as he doesn't get pissed. And then point guard, obviously redshirting Leon Glenn makes a lot of sense. Like, that's a huge risk to be that aggressive with the red shirts, but that would be four red shirt freshmen. And boy, that would really help us with sustainability for this team. It's just, would Willis and Lucas get pissed and walk away? You know, that's the only question. Is whether or not that's worth the risk. Yeah, we shouldn't have to worry about cutting players because we do have plenty of seniors on the team. So we'll be able to bring in more people. Yeah, I mean, technically running two people for every position, like... It's not a bad setup. I think we try it. You know, we won't know what we can get away with until we try. I think we do look... Well, I talked to them about playing time. I don't, I'm not sure for sure if we uh, kind of sold them on it. There is no promise screen. You know, really quickly. Steiner, decent chance of getting drafted. Bo Cruz, remote chance at being an undrafted signing. That's it, actually. Yeah, it's a thing, right? Like, I don't have a comparison for, you know, from this to uh, NCAA football. So, honestly, like, I think we just try it. I think we just try it. Running three at each position. You're not wrong. the same time we don't even have enough people to do that anyway we don't have the perfect balance with our roster let's get a look at what this team would be if we were to indeed run with this Python would be our sixth man. You know, I might regret it. Let me back out. We're going to save here. We're going to make a secondary save file as well. Just in case we totally fuck it. <laughs> Which we might. We'll have a safety net just in case. But I think we try it. I think we go pretty damn aggressive with the red shirt options. Because if that works, we're golden. A little bit more long term. It lets these guys develop, particularly Willis and Lucas. And then immediately starting next season, they become more valuable. You know, particularly the centerman with Steiner's last year coming up. So we'll think about it. We give ourselves a good stopping point, And we'll think about it as to whether or not that's actually the right choice. But all of the sudden, we're back up to two prestige. Got our first conference title in team history. Things are looking up a little bit.